This is a short video to introduce the new Add Component module, which comes with the latest release of MoldWorks. Components are now listed in a component groups under a standard component folder in the MoldWorks Feature Manager tree. The component creation and modification dialogs can be accessed through clicking on the right hand mouse button on this folder structure. Here we use the standard component folder to access the component groups to select a specific component, in this case a cap screw. Moldworks opens a property manager with two tabs. In the first tab we select a start face for the component and select or in this case create a positioning sketch using the small icon to open the SolidWorks sketcher. Notice that we get an instantaneous accurate open GL display of the screws at each point and that all the MoldWorks plates and inserts are temporarily displayed as tr transparent. On exiting the sketch the property manager appears with the second tab active, the tab describing the component parameters. For the screw, selecting the part to fix into the plate will automatically find the minimum dimension screw whose length is sufficient to satisfy the active screw rule. Here it is found the M6 screw and of course the screws are duplicated to the second core instance. Changes made to the screw parameter will change the screw selected but it will always remain a standard size. In this case we change the diameter to 10 which may alter the screw length so that the screw rule remains satisfied. In this case penetration at least one and a half times the screw diameter. Next we add a core pin ejector to knock out the bosses in the core inserts. Since we are using an ejector, MoldWorks assumes that the start face the top of the ejector plate. In this case, we want to use the static bottom clamping plate as the start face. Here we select a sketch indicating the center of the bosses. Now we select the top of the bosses as the length of the core pin. Notice that a bigger core pin long enough to reach the point has been displayed. Here we modify the diameter to reflect approximately the boss size. In order to fix the core pin into the plate we add an offset at the bottom while moldwork still makes sure that the top of the core pin remains at the same selected position. A component scheme with relative parameters can be displayed at any stage by expanding the top section. Here we see the H7 length where the core pin hole is tight in the oversize of the holes before. Next we will use add component drop down from the command manager to add an ejector sleeve encompassing the core pins. This is a flat menu with all the standard components on one level. The ejector plate has been selected by the software as the start face. Here we use the component selection to position the ejector sleeves and select the core pins. The sleeves are positioned around the core pins with the inner diameter of the sleeve equal to the outer diameter of the core pins. This type of intelligence exists for many other suitable components as well like springs, screws and interlocks etc. Next we give ORT as the length parameter which will cause the ejector sleeves to look for the start of the plastic. Finally, we create a trim ejector, this time using the Add Component menu, which is, the, is also divided into the component groups. Here we give a point on the fly, opening the SolidWorks sketcher.
We key in a diameter of 10 and choose the ORT parameter again. In the side view, we see that the ejector reaches the first point of the plastic. Change the length parameter to trim now causes the ejector to pass through the plastic in order for the system to then trim it back after creation. Since the ejector will not be symmetrical, we add a lock. The ejectors have an extra tab to add ejector locks. There are four types of ejector locks. In this case, we are going to use the ejector lock with a dowel pin. The ejector is trimmed and the locks are created.